In mid-April, we switched our new user experience completely on to 100% of our users. It was something that we'd been developing for over a year. And looking at the consumer marketplace, the number of photos and videos that we're able to capture on any type of device from phones to tablets, et cetera. And we realized and heard from consumers that it's great to have apps, it's great to be able to text, it's great to be able to post to pin and, and other things with their images, but they really needed one central place to store all of those images. So that's what our new site redesign and, and our new ecosystem is all about, is giving consumers a single home for all of their photos and videos. And from there, you can edit, you can post, you can share to any site that you want. But it's just trying to create that central home where you know all your photos and videos are and their full original size. There is such a movement towards capturing and, and being smartphone first as your first camera. We've seen in the past couple of years that go from you know, a very small percentage of photos and videos coming from smartphones to now it's about 35 plus percent. Um, we're seeing a little bit of capture in tablet, but we think tablets is really somewhere a place where people manage and edit their photos, but not really capture. But it's important to us and it's important to consumers to be available across every device, whether that's your PC, where a large majority of photos and videos are still trapped, as we like to say, because people have loaded them there from cameras, loaded them there from phones, but it's not really a place that you want to manage your photos. So we have an easy uploader to send them to the cloud to photo bucket. We have an auto uploader from smartphones to send them to photo bucket, and we're developing a new tablet app to do the same thing. It's just from a consumer standpoint, they don't think about platforms, so it's important for us just to be wherever they are, whenever they are. There is a fragmentation, and what we heard from users is that I'm ca capturing pictures on my phone, I may be texting some, I may be posting some to Facebook, I may be pinning some, and then at the end of the day, your photo library, your video library is spread out everywhere. And this need to pull everything back together, sort of to break down that fragmentation, applies not only to photos, but also to videos. Um, you may be at your child's soccer game and capture 10 pictures, but there's the one video of your child scoring the goal, and, and that may be the highlight of what you want to share. So a lot of the platforms and apps that are out there are photo-centric or video-centric, but again, that's not the way consumers think about their stories. That's not the way they think about their memories. They want to be able to gather them all in one place together. Um, so our site and our ecosystem is created to store all of those. And then we also have new devices and storytelling features to where you can combine photos and videos together because most of the offerings in the space, you have to choose one or the other. And again, that's not the way we tell stories. We want to be able to pull from different aspects of the day, different aspects of the experience, and thread them all together. Historically, we've uh, PhotoBucket has been a media revenue-based business with about 90% of our revenue coming from media and roughly 10% from a pro service that we offered. Um, also, historically, the, the primary service was free. Um, but what we've do, done is we've moved to a tiered subscription model. And really, the key consumer benefit from that change is we're now storing all original photos and videos. So there's no compression of any original images. And we think that's really important because as we move cross device and we want to print images or we want to project images to large screen TVs or TVs in our home to view them, it's important to have that full image available. And in many of the social sites and many of the other photo sites, I think consumers unknowingly are uploading their images to places where they're being compressed. Um, so in order to maintain those full-size images, we have moved to a tiered subscription model. Photo storage, photo and video storage is free up to two gigabytes, and then there's tiered structure after that. The competitive set today for PhotoBucket is completely different than it was eight to 10 years ago when PhotoBucket and Flickr were the number one and number two um, players in the photo storage space. Today, we're still the number one and two players in the photo storage space, but the difference now is that consumers are uploading so many photos and videos to Facebook. 
they're uploading videos to YouTube, they're uploading images to Pinterest, to Instagram. So there's this great diversification and splintering really of the marketplace. And we at Photobucket really support that and we try to empower our consumers to be able to store their photos and videos first at Photobucket, but then to be able to share them out to anywhere they want to. A lot of the other players in the space, if you put a photo at Instagram or if you tweet a photo, it's essentially stuck within those walls and it limits what you can do after that image is uploaded. And what we really want to do is be able to empower users to store their original images and videos with Photobucket, but then be able to share them out, consume them any way they want to, or for that matter, keep them private. So we give users really simple privacy controls. Um, so back to the question about competition, there's infinitely more players in the space today, but we feel like this core foundational home for all your photos and videos is a unique positioning for Photobucket. And while lots of people are competing for mind share of what to do with your photos and videos, no one's really trying to claim that space. And we think it's something that consumers, they've told us they want and they've shown that they need.